Hello there and welcome back to another video. I was prowling eBay a little while ago and came across a computer listed in the four parts or not working section that intrigued me. It was this little Optiplex 7050 SFF, a model of computer that I haven't messed around with before. It was described as having an i7-7700 and turning off after being turned on. That was about all there was on the system in the description, so it's a little bit of a black box, especially when it comes to RAM configuration, but in any case, at $80, let's give fixing it a shot. After pulling off the side panel, which I'll talk about a little more here soon, as I'm certain you've noticed an oddity there, I immediately noticed that I scored on the RAM configuration. 4.6 of RAM? Assuming this is a common Dell configuration, this should mean that I've managed to grab a system with 32 gigs of RAM, which would be awesome. The rest of the internals don't look weird at all, so I'll go ahead and see if I can replicate the problem that was described in the description. With the DisplayPort cable, keyboard, and power connected, let's see what this system does when powered on. Hopefully, we've got a fun problem to fix. If this system isn't actually broken like a few others I've bought, I'm going to be quite disappointed as I was hoping for a bit more of an interesting fix for a video. After powering on the system, it doesn't immediately turn off. I know that it looks like it does, but the camera's exposure just doesn't show the pretty faint power button. There was no post or any signal to the monitor at all, even after a while of sitting there, but I decided that I might as well hit F2 a few times just to see if that did anything. Well, my odd impulse to hit F2 a couple times to see if I could coerce the system into posting actually worked. The system posted. This wasn't supposed to happen, but the fact that it displayed nothing and then only after blindly telling it to boot into setup is definitely odd. Can't say that I was expecting this, and honestly I was somewhat hoping I might get to do a board level repair on a power supply, but let's work with what we're getting here. All 32 gigs of RAM was detected, which also confirmed that it was, in fact, 32 gigabytes of RAM. Only 2133 megahertz, but I was prepared to receive a system with either 8 gigs or no RAM, and this is a pleasant surprise. Back to the behavior at hand, the i7-7700 is also in the system, which is good to see, and other than that, there's not too much to do here, so I'll go ahead and shut down the system. That first post behavior was really weird to me, and I haven't seen it before, so let's just do a full power cycle and see if it does it again, or if it was some weird result of memory training or another similar process. After unplugging the system, draining any residual power in the caps by pressing the power button and holding it for a few seconds, and then plugging it back in and powering the system back on, the same behavior was observed. No post after a while, I pressed F2 once, and it posted to the BIOS. What an odd behavior. Because the system is behaving weirdly on startup in regard to posting and booting to the BIOS, my first suspect is going to be the CMOS battery. I quickly pulled it out and tested it, but no, the CMOS battery is actually fine here. So back to the drawing board then. Hopefully this isn't some kind of issue with the BIOS being corrupted in any way, and hopefully it's no issue with the integrated graphics, although I highly doubt that because the video output I'm using is completely functional once the system does post. Speaking of the video output, that I'm using, so far I've been using the bottom display port output on the motherboard of this system. There's no dedicated GPU here, so integrated graphics are my only option, and I have a display port to HDMI cable always at my workbench to test systems, so using this port made the most sense to me. But at this point, I was wondering if it was some kind of odd behavior with the display port output or not. Let's find out. The first thing that I wanted to try while messing about with the video outputs was unplugging and replugging the DisplayPort cable while the system was in that state of on and responsive to keyboard inputs, just not displaying anything. This didn't yield any results though, so next up was trying the other DisplayPort output. And once more, this yielded no post and the exact same behavior as the other output. Fine. So the DisplayPort outputs don't seem to be cooperating for now. Let's go all the way back to the olden days and bring out the VGA cable, because this system happens to have a VGA port configured on the motherboard. Not all these 7050s have this, but this one does, which is quite interesting. I plugged VGA in, and hey look at that, there's something happening on the monitor. It recognized a VGA connection, but there isn't any image from the computer. Well, it's farther along than DisplayPort ever got, so let's reboot the system and see what that does. After rebooting, the system posted immediately to the No Bootable Devices Found screen, exactly what I'd expect from a fully functional system without any drives in it. That's great, but hold on, because I want to learn a bit more about the behavior of the system here. The VGA worked, but only after a reboot, notably not an absolute power cycle as I never unplugged the system. Was it the VGA cable or the reboot that made the post happen? Let's put the DisplayPort cable back in, boot to the blank screen it should be giving based on past observations, reboot, and see if that posts then. No post. Back to VGA, and VGA posts immediately on the first power-up, so it's clearly something with DisplayPort. One more test I want to do before I move on from this odd DisplayPort behavior that might be fixed with a BIOS update or something, the board also has a native HDMI port, so I want to try if that behaves like the DisplayPort, the VGA, or something entirely different. For the HDMI test, I'm going to use a native HDMI to HDMI cable, unlike with the DisplayPort where I use a DisplayPort to HDMI cable that's never given me any issues, but it's always possible it's a contributing factor here. 
Well, would you look at that? The HDMI output gives an immediate post just like the VGA output. Clearly, it's something to do with the DisplayPort outputs and only the DisplayPort outputs. I did a quick little bit of research and found this page on Dell's website. It pertains to the Optiplex 7050 and it very much seems like it could be the issue here. This also somewhat further strengthens my suspicion of the DisplayPort to HDMI cable. Could that cable possibly be interfering with the EDID at the first startup in some way? I have no idea. If any of you watching have worked in an organization that uses 7050s, or have just worked on several computers of this model and understand what's going on, please share your experience in the comments below. Okay, with that strange post behavior mostly demystified now, let's talk about the issue that probably caught everyone's eye at the beginning. What's going on with that side panel? Well, I didn't notice it in the listing when I bought this computer. It was very much visible in the pictures. I just didn't happen to notice it, so that one's on me. But the little blue side panel latch that allows us to actuate the side panel locking mechanism has popped off and can't pop back on. It's a little difficult to demonstrate on camera, but you can see that the piece of metal that the plastic bit attaches to has been pushed inside the case. This means that the plastic piece can't clip onto it properly anymore and is why the piece is separated from the case. The plastic piece itself seems like it's in good enough shape to keep on being used, so I don't think I'll need to model it in CAD and 3D print a new one, but this metal bit definitely needs to be fixed first before I can test that theory. Here you can see the case latching mechanism, which I need to remove from the case to bend back into shape. It's held in by these little tabs, but there are little gaps and slots in the piece that will allow me to remove it from those tabs if I can shift it far enough to the left. To do that, I'll first need to remove the spring that pulls it towards the right, and with that done, it's nearly able to be removed. Sadly, the end of this little piece hits this little bump that's been pressed into the case. If I can very slightly bend the end of the piece towards the inside of the chassis though, I should be able to shift it on top of the bump, allowing me to move it far enough to the left to remove the piece. And after a bit of finagling, which I didn't manage to get a good angle of sadly, I had successfully removed the piece. Here it's much easier to see the way in which this piece has been bent, and now that it's out of the case, because it's simple, relatively thin sheet metal, I can just bend it back into shape with my hands. With the bend worked out, it was surprisingly difficult to get this part back in. I had to do it off camera because it was a super awkward angle, and I wouldn't have been able to get a good angle no matter what but eventually I got it back in. Once I returned the spring and replaced the fan that I removed to put the piece back in, I could go ahead and see if the plastic bit clips onto the metal piece properly now. Here's the moment of truth. Will it fit? Yes, it does. The mechanism moves throughout its entire range of motion properly, although it's a little bit stickier than it would usually be. I don't think I'll be able to fix that slight bit of stickiness, but the important part is that the latching mechanism works now and will allow the side panel to be locked on and unlocked for removal which is really all that matters. Sweet. We've managed to figure out what was going on with the post issue, haven't found any other issues with the system yet, including the issue that was described, and I'm honestly starting to think that this system might just be fully functional at this point. I've also fixed the broken side panel latch, and it seems like it should be functional, though I should first check that it can actually lock its side panel into place. And it actually doesn't seem to be functioning quite right, so something's still up with the side panel's locks. And that would do it. Looks like one of the three locking tabs on the panel had something happen to it at some point, was broken off, and had the little bit of the tab left bent over in a way that it blocks the side panel from going on 100% of the way and locking into place. After bending that tab back out and cutting it off, the side panel fits on and locks still not properly. Finally, I think I spotted the final issue with the case. The entire back part is bent slightly in. It doesn't show up the best on camera, but mainly where the PCIe slot covers meet the part of the back panel where the motherboard's I.O. shield is, there's a noticeable bend. Thankfully, this thin sheet metal was also pretty easy to bend back into shape with my hands, and this final bit of fixing is what finally allowed the side panel to lock into place. The only minor issue with it is that the blue locking lever needs to be returned to the locked position by hand instead of by the spring, but again, the most important thing is that the side panel gets locked on properly and stays locked on properly, and can also still be unlocked just like on any other system of this type. I'd call that a success, much better than taping the side panel on or drilling holes and screwing it on or something like that. All right, time to get an SSD in here. And while I'm at it, let's take a look at the exact memory modules that were used in here. The total RAM in the system consists of two different, but very well matched in terms of spec, kits of RAM. So nothing that should cause performance or stability issues. Both kits were two 8GB sticks of 2R by 8 DDR4 2133 MHz RAM. Before I finish up the job here by repasting the CPU and running stability tests, I want to see what the baseline temperature of the stock thermal paste is. 
so I'll get the SSD set up with the install of Windows so that I can test that, and then I'll repaste. This system will just be getting a simple 256GB SSD as it's the best that I have that fits. With the SSD installed and the system reassembled, I installed Windows 10 and got some updates ticking. Windows Update pulled down Windows Updates, good drivers, and a forced BIOS update. I wasn't surprised at this, as this happened on the Precision 3420s, which are from the same time as this Optiplex. I still have mixed feelings about the forced BIOS updates for consumer systems. I believe that they should make it so that you can choose when to do the BIOS update, so that it doesn't happen at a bad time. I've actually had a laptop do one of these while I was in the middle of trying to diagnose a network link in the wall. The system was misbehaving, so I rebooted it, and boom, it went straight into a firmware update on battery power. Yeah, not ideal. But that is quite the tangent, so let's break it off from here. I was going to do a BIOS update on the system anyway, especially because of the DisplayPort behavior, but because this one happened for me, I didn't have to do it on my own. After everything was updated and set up, I ran Cinebench R23 for 10 minutes and the ending temperature was about 92 degrees Celsius. Lovely. I've heard bad things about these blower style coolers in these systems, so I'm skeptical about how much a repaste will really help this, but I'll do one anyways to see if it helps. Needless to say, based on the temperature of 91 degrees Celsius you see on screen right now, it did not help much but I guess one degree is still one degree, so technically it did do something. Not the exact repair that I thought I'd be doing, but certainly a repair nonetheless, and a successful one at that. I hope that you were able to at least enjoy this video, and maybe even learn a thing or two. I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.